CataractCoach.com. Schlem's canal stent gets damaged. Let's learn how to deal with this bent hydrus stent. Now, cataract parts already been done. That looks good. Lens in the capsule bag. A little more viscolats going inside the eye here. An extra incision being made next to the main incision. Very much in the clear cornea, though. I wish that was a little bit more near the limbus. And now let's see the gonia prism going outside the eye. What a beautiful view of the angle. Now, let me tell you about retinarounds.com, our sister channel. You definitely need to learn from retinarounds. A new retina video every single day. You will learn so much, I promise. It's great for retina specialists, but also for anterior segment surgeons like you and me. Now, you can see you've placed the hydrus delivery device inside the eye. Put the gonia prism on one more time. The trabecular meshwork has been stained with tripan blue dye. That's going to make it easy to visualize. So now, as you start to advance the hydrus, you want to make sure you're in the correct position or plane, but take a look. It, it went in partially, but it's about a third sticking out, right? This is a device that's, what, about eight millimeters long? And you probably got a third of it, two, three millimeters sticking outside and not being advanced. Now, you can try to keep advancing it with the same delivery device here, but remember, this is a very wimpy little device here. It can be bent easily. So now, let's see, you can engage it, maybe withdraw it a little bit. There we go. These are made of a metal called nitinol, which is a nickel-titanium alloy. And that's commonly used in a lot of implants throughout the body. So again, trying again to place this. And sometimes it's just hard to find the correct angle of approach here. Again, once you get it in Schlem's Canal, you need to have very smooth sailing. You don't want to have forceful nature because then you're, if you're pushing it too hard, you're probably not in the correct position here. So again, trying to advance it. And then, again, you may have already damaged it. And if it has a kink in it, you're not going to be able to advance it quite easily. Now, you've got to be careful. You can create a cycle dialysis cleft, right? Think about this. So there's the device. And again, I think too much of it's sticking outside. Too much of it's not in the canals. You probably got two and a half millimeters, maybe three millimeters, not outside. So more viscoelastic. Okay. That's reasonable. Let's see. How do you get this either advanced fully? or removed from the eye now. So put the gonium prism down here, and now trying to engage the end of it. But if it's damaged, you're going to have a hard time engaging it with that same delivery device here. Again, if you play with one of these devices outside the eye or in the wet lab, you'll notice they're pretty wimpy. They're not designed to be super tough and strong. It is a nickel-titanium alloy, we said, nitinol, which is reasonably strong. But again, now what are you going to do? You need to get this out of the eye, I would not try to salvage this anymore. I think your best mode of operation here is just to remove the thing. So, again, here's trying again with the gonia prism on. There's the view. Trying to re-engage it with the delivery device, which at this point, I think you're better off with some small gauge intraocular forceps just to grab the end and carefully pull it out of the eye. You want to be very careful. You don't want to cause any more damage to the angle there. You could create a very large psychodialysis cleft and then have a whole host of other issues to deal with. So here, trying to get the end, that looks pretty reasonable. Again, sometimes, at this point, higher magnification can help you up. Oh, there we go. Now we've got some, looks like MST micro forceps or something similar to those. Grabbing this and slowly, 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 don't rip the angle open here. Don't rip open Schnum's Canal. You want to grab that and gently back it out. And again, you can place it again in a different position in the eye. Just make a different pair of knees and adjust your position, and you can still use a new one. But I wouldn't try to recycle this old device here. Again, once you slowly, slowly, slowly back this thing out, I think we'll be okay here. That just goes to show you, in these mixed devices, listen, like with any surgery, it's not over until it's over. And you think it's pretty easy, but you know, sometimes you just don't know what you're going to run into. So here, more viscoelastic is always a good option. And there you can see there's a little bit of a psychodialysis cleft there. And I think let's, that shouldn't be too bad for the patient, but we'll find out. Let's slowly remove this device from the eye. Now that you can get the eye back in position. There's the micro forceps. You can see just how long that device is. This is not a small little device here. Remember, when you put this in, this is overall length of probably 8 millimeters or so. It's designed to go 3 clock hours. And yeah, you can see now it's been bent there. Let's just throw that away and start from scratch. So beautiful case. Thank you for sharing. Do appreciate it. And check out our sister channel, retinarounds.com. New retina video for you and me to learn.